Hello everyone. My name is Atik. I am a Redblue Certified DevOps Engineer. Today I am going to show you how you can create uh, and uh, set up uh, Apache Cassandra in an Ubuntu instance. So let's get started. Today I'm going to use DigitalOcean. So I have uh, got $200 credit in DigitalOcean. So I'm going to create some, I'm going to use some, some of my credits to create those tutorials for you. And you can also get this $200 credit. I will give the link in the video description. So let's get started. At first I'm going to create a new uh, droplet. So it's droplet in DigitalOcean. So if you click on the create, then there is a droplet, click here. Then uh, I will be able to choose the possible options of uh, like uh, OS and all those things. So let's choose those things. Okay, it is taking some time, but it should be okay now. By the way, I have also a blog related to the tutorial, so you can just copy paste the comments from the blog, which it's completely proven. So um, it is taking some time, maybe my internet or something else. So let's just wait for a minute. Okay, it's almost there. So I'm going to choose the region uh, Bangalore. It's nearest to me, India and uh Ubuntu 22 that's okay all other things as it is and let's try to create oh, I have to set the password so just go to password generator and generate a password I usually use this tool for password generator copy and then paste it so create droplet it should create the droplet for you uh, it takes some time so i'm going to pause the video so uh, i'm back and the droplet is being created this is the ip address if i go to the details of the droplet so this is running on eight gigs of memory and or in virtual CPU. <clears throat> to connect to the droplet, there are a couple of ways. One that is using the uh, traditional SSH putty. Another one is using console. So I'm going to use the console because I don't want to connect putty. So console is more uh, convenient for me. <laughs> so let's see what happens here. Uh, uh, it is loading. Just wait for a few more seconds. I hope it should be okay. While it's being loaded, let's go back to our blog and see what is there. So first, we need to install Java if it's not there. So I just need to install this. Then uh, add the Cassandra repository. So it should be pretty easy. Then import repository signing keys. That is pretty easy. And then install Cassandra start the service then verify the installation after that we are going to use cq uh, cql sh to log into the cluster and create a name space sorry create a key space and then using that key space create a table data insert some data into the table and then verify that so pretty standard awesome so our uh, ui is there so let's clear this screen and copy the commands. First, uh, Java one should be easy. So we do a pretty update. And then uh, we are going to install Java. Mm -hmm. It is doing that. Okay. So a lot of things are going up and down. Looks like it's progressing. 
while it's loading please subscribe to my channel it's free <laughs> you don't have to pay anything just it shows that how much you care about this channel i'm going to get more uh, tutorials on this so if you have anything that is special for you you can put as a comment in the video description i will try to cover that topic as well so uh, our java installation is done looks like it's done so i'm going to clear the screen and then uh, again i'm going to add this part so okay and then um, i'm going to add this b and it should be okay then just a moment okay that's done so now the install interesting part it's installing the cassandra so let's begin if you don't know what is cassandra is it's a no sql based database it's uh, similarly like mongodb that you can see about So it is now being installed. Okay, that's also done. Quite impressive. Now I'm going to start the Cassandra. Okay, once we start, we can also enable Cassandra. So almost similar command where we're just going to change we start with enable e -N -N -E -N. that means when we reboot the system it should automatically start that being said then let's verify the installation it's usually takes some time so if you get some error that means that your installation is not ready but good luck we have everything installed successfully now let's uh, use Cassandra QL, CQL SH. So I have logged into the server with CQL SH, then creating this key space. That is also should be pretty easy. Then I'm going to use the key space. So The key space that I created, I'm going to use that and create the table. Now I'm going to create a table. The difference with MongoDB is that you don't have to create the uh, collections in MongoDB. If you just insert data, it automatically created. But here it's slightly different, I guess. So we just inserted one data. It's look like exactly MySQL. But it's Cassandra. <laughs> That's a bit strange, isn't it? So uh, here is our data. So one, two, three. Let's insert one more data. Uh, let's add. Um, the value needs to be two, right? Okay, that's done. Let's see what we have. What do we have, journal? Okay, two rows, ten each stop, then one. Not sure why it's this. Anyway, uh, that being said, uh, this is the Cassandra. So we have installed Cassandra. We have created a e space. We have created a table, inserted some data into the table, get some data. After that, now it's up to you what you want to do. You have the full power to do all those crazy things for your application. That being said, that's it for today. I hope this uh, tutorial helps you a lot. If uh, you like this video, please subscribe to my channel so that I can get more videos like this. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.